guys, it's Emma. So today I'm going to be filming my what is on my iPhone 10 plus comparing it to my iPhone 7 and talking about all of my new favorite features. So if you guys are wondering whether or not the iPhone 10 is worth it, hopefully this video will help you decide. If this is your first time seeing my face, it's super nice to have you here. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button to become part of the hashtag Eminem fam. Really quickly before I get started, I just wanted to say if you didn't know, I'm a high school senior and it is the month of November, which means it's college app season. A lot of my apps are due this month or the beginning of next month. So that is like all I've been doing lately. It makes me so sad that I have to put YouTube on the back burner right now, but this is like gonna affect the next four years of my life. So I really have to focus on college apps. But after this month, I should be back to posting regularly. So please bear with me and I really appreciate your patience with me. It means a lot. All right, so I really hope you guys enjoy this video and let's get started. All right, so I'll start off with the physical differences between the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 7. So as far as size goes, they're pretty much the same size. The iPhone 10 is just a little bit longer. But keep in mind, the iPhone 10 is also all screen, so you actually get a lot more screen than you do with the iPhone 7. Another thing is color selections. Oh, oh my gosh, I almost dropped this. I have to send this back, so I better not break it any more than I already have. So color selections. The iPhone 7 came in three colors, I wanna say gold, silver, and gray. And the iPhone 10 only comes in silver and gray. So this is the silver one. It has this glossy white back, and then on the side is the silver, which kind of reminds me of the original iPhone. Another noticeable physical difference are the cameras. So iPhone cameras have, as far as I know, always been horizontal, and now the iPhone 10 camera is vertical. And when I'm showing you guys what is on my iPhone, I'll actually show you guys like the new camera features. Probably the feature that's gonna take the most getting used to is the fact that there's no home button on the iPhone 10. So the iPhone 7 and all the previous iPhones before that have had a home button and recently you have been able to unlock your phone using your home button. But now with the iPhone 10, you unlock your phone using your face. All right, so those are all the physical difference, I believe. So now I'm gonna get on to what is actually on the iPhone and show you guys my favorite features. So to unlock the iPhone 10 after you've set up Face ID, all you do is look into the phone. You don't have to hold it at like some weird angle. You just look at it from wherever you are and then there's a little lock icon at the top and it'll switch to unlocked. And then all you have to do from there is swipe up. And something that I just figured out like a few days ago, I didn't realize this when I first got the phone. When your phone is locked and you get a notification, whether it be like a text message, Message or a snapchat it won't tell you the actual content of the notification until you unlock it with your face which is really cool because if you get like a notification someone sitting next to you wouldn't be able to read it until you look into it and it gives you like a preview of it and then you could swipe up if you want to open it and you can also use face ID to pay for things so like for example like on my Starbucks app if I want to reload I just use face ID to reload it as opposed to using my fingerprint okay so now I will actually show you guys what I have on my iPhone so my home screen is just this all white back background with like some cacti at the bottom. I just thought it was really cute. And then at the top I have calendar, weather, mail, reminders, notes, iTunes store, app store, iTunes view, settings, and clips. The first page of my home screen is kind of like just random stuff. I haven't really organized it yet. And then at the bottom I just have messages, Safari, music, and clock. Those are just like my most used apps. And then if you swipe over to the next page, the more exciting page, the first folder that I have is phone. So I have FaceTime, phone, and contacts. I don't really know why I made a folder for this, but I've had it for a while, so I just kept it. And then I have my social folder. So first I have Instagram. So if you want to follow my Instagram, it is at Emma Mondin, and I just post whatever I'm up to. Like I recently went to Universal Orlando Resort and I just posted a ton of pictures from there. So as you can see, to get out of the app, I just swipe up like that. And then next we have Twitter and my Twitter is also at Emma Monden. Why can't I go to my profile? And I just tweet whatever I'm up to. And then my Snapchat is Blissful Dreams. I post on here almost every day. So if you wanna see like what I'm doing, what I'm filming, and if you wanna be the first to know when I post a video, Definitely follow me on Snapchat. And then I have the YouTube app, Gmail, Facebook, Pinterest, and Facebook Messenger. So next I have another favorite folder, which is photography, because I love taking photos. So in this folder I have photos, camera, and I will show you guys the cool new features on here. You can see my tripod. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna turn it to front-facing camera, and you can see that on the right here is portrait mode. And basically what it does is it blurs your background so it looks so much more professional. So I'll show you without portrait and then with portrait. It just blurs the background and the lights look so, so cool right now. And there's even different settings for portrait mode. So this is natural light. You can swipe right for studio light, 
contour light, stage light, and stage light mono. So there are so many different like effects you can use. And the front facing camera is just like absolutely amazing. And then the back camera is like, oh my gosh, it's so clear. You can't really see it. Oh, hi, this is my setup. <laughs> You can't really see it that well from inside my room, but if you go outside, you can definitely see like how advanced it is. Okay, so now the apps that I use to edit my Instagram pictures, I get questions about this all the time. First favorite app is called ViscoCam. I'm not sure if this is the exact picture that I posted on my Instagram, but it's similar, if not. So these are the filters that I have, and ViscoCam comes with a set of free filters, and then you can download more. Some of them are free, some of them you have to pay for. My favorite filter that I use on all of my photos is called HB2. It's a free one that you have to download. So this is HB2, and then I go to edit, and I will edit the exposure. So I'll make this one like a little bit brighter. And then I'll edit the temperature. This one I'll make a little bit like cooler. And then I usually add a little bit of a tint to it. So that's just kind of like a rough edit. And then I will export that, and I will go into Facetune, and then I just use Facetune to whiten all of my pictures because I really like that like white aesthetic theme. So I will go to the whiten tool, and I will just whiten anything that's like white or gray. So in this picture, I'll whiten the snow, I'll whiten the floor ground, whatever it's called. So that's just kind of like a rough edit of how I edit my Instagram pictures. And then I have Square Ready, which I'm going to delete because I don't even need this app anymore. It puts borders on your photos, but it's mainly for like the old Instagram. Done. And then I blur photo if I want to blur anything out of my pictures. Next I have the utilities folder and I just have passwords in here, which is like a grand app for all of your passwords and it's fingerprint or face protected so nobody can like just open your uh, password app and then I have chase maps ways and maps and ways are both like uh, navigation apps for when I'm driving and I don't know where I'm going Shazam is if you want to know the name of a song that's playing you just start recording and it'll tell you the name of the song songbook I don't really know I have that it's like a choir app I have find my iPhone voice memos Swerk it, which is like an at-home workout app which is really cool and then I just put in like a bunch of the apps that come with your iPhone in this folder that I don't really use. Then I have my school folder, so all the apps that I use for school. Calculator, Grade Pop, which is an app that updates you whenever there's a new uh, grade in your grade book, which always gives me anxiety. I don't even know why I have that app. Then I have the Grades app, which shows me all my grades. Uh, Be Focused, which is a really cool app if you want to stay focused. Wow. Um, so you can just set a timer for however long you want to work. And so for this one, it's one hour, but you can go to settings and you could do like 50 minutes and then you just press start. And then that just helps you like stay on track. And then you can also time your break. So it's really good for staying focused. Then I have Google Classroom, Google Drive, Google Docs, Tiny Scanner, which is for like if I need to scan a document and submit it. Quizlet, which is my favorite flashcard app. It's like a mobile flashcard app, which is so cool. And I use it to study for like absolutely everything. Then I have Google Slides, Desmos, which is a graphing app, and Mathway. If you have a math problem on your homework that you don't know how to do, you can enter it into Mathway. I have my faves app folder. Um, so it just has all of my favorite restaurants that I like to mobile order from sometimes. So I have Panera Bread, Chick-fil-A, Starbucks, and BJ's. Fun fact, I have a BJ's like two minutes away from my house, and so sometimes I just like mobile order a Pazuki from the app. And then I have Mercari Poshmop and Poshmop? <laughs> no, I'm a Poshmark. I have Mercari, Poshmark, and Depop, which are all apps where you can like post um, items that you want to sell. I downloaded all of them because I'm not sure which one I want to use yet, but I have a bunch of clothes that I've like grown out of that I want to post on there. So let me know in the comments which one you guys think is the best. And then I have Sleep Cycle, which my friend Devin introduced to me. And basically what it does is it wakes you up when you're in like your lightest stage of sleep. So you basically give it like a 10 minute window of when you want to wake up. So let's say like 5.35 to 5.45, which is the window I use for school weeks. And then you just do start and you lay your phone down and it'll track like your sleep patterns, um, which is super cool. I think it's based on your breathing. I'm not 100% sure. And then it'll wake you up when your sleep is at its lightest. So if I go to statistics, you can see my sleep for the last time I use this app 
which was Wednesday? I don't know. So where the bar is highest is when you are awake, and then where the bar is lowest is when you're in your deepest sleep. It tells you how long you were in bed for, your sleep quality, your time in bed, if you snore. So if you're ever wondering if you snore, this app tells you. And then it also tells you like the total number of nights you use the app, and your average sleep time, which mine is six hours, which is not very good. <laughs> Next I have Autogravity, which I'm pretty sure none of you guys will be interested in because it's more of an app for adults who are looking um, into buying a car. You just like select your car, I'll show you. And then, so let's say Acura ILX, this is my car. And then you click on the car and you do next. And you can enter in like your, the down payment you have, the term you wanna pay it off in, and it kind of gives you an idea of like how much it'll be. So I just have this app for when I get my next car. I'm really into cars, so I kind of like looking ahead and seeing like if I were to get this car, like what would I be paying monthly, that kind of thing. This app is the characters app, and it just has some black and white little icons, and it always comes up with ads, which is really annoying. But it basically just has like some black and white cool characters that you can use. So if you're ever wondering like how someone used this like black and white um, emoji looking thing on Instagram, it's probably the characters app. And then lastly, I have Netflix, which I don't really watch on my phone because if I'm gonna watch Netflix, I watch it on my computer, but I have it there in case. So yeah, I think that is everything for what is on my iPhone 10 plus comparison and new features. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments if you guys think the iPhone 10 is worth it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.